One of the most underrated sitcoms I have actually come to like is F Troop. And I'm going to talk about it right now in this TV log. Big Days Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. TV log. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duel, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around, I've got a TV log for y'all. This time, I bring to you F Troop. F Troop is a satirical American television sitcom western about U.S. soldiers and Native Americans in the Wild West during the 1860s. Originally premiering on ABC in September of 1965, the show, which was originally produced by Warner Brothers and created by Seaman Jacobs, Ed James, and Jim Barnett, proved to be one hysterical, fun-filled ride. The show, unfortunately, only ran for two seasons, one in black and white and the second in color. Anyway, the series relied on, well, heavily on character-based humor, verbal and visual gags, slapstick, physical comedy, and burlesque comedy make up the prime ingredients for the show. The series played fast and loose on the, well, with the historical events and persons and often parodied them for comical effect. So... F Troop takes place at Fort Courage, a fictional U.S. Army outpost in the Old West. From near the end of the American Civil War in 1865 to at least 1867, there is a town of the same name adjacent to the fort. Fort Courage was named for the fictitious General Sam Courage, portrayed by Cliff Arquette. The fort itself is constructed in the stockade style typically found in most American westerns. Now, the commanding officer is the gallant, although laughably clumsy, Captain Wilton Parmenter, played by Ken Berry, whom we sadly lost a almost a couple of years ago. Of course, he'd be best known for doing his work on well, later on, programs such as Mayberry RFD and Mama's Family. Anyway, Parmenter is descended from a long line of distinguished military officers. He is awarded the Medal of Honor after accidentally instigating the final Civil War charge at the Battle of Appomattox. Only a private in the Quartermaster Corps he is ordered to fetch the commanding officer's laundry, presumably General Grant's. As Parmenter rides away to get the laundry, he repeatedly sneezes. A group of Union soldiers mistake his sneezing for an order to charge, turning the tide of the bell, and earning Parmenter the nickname, the Scourge of Appomattox. He also is awarded the Purple Heart after he is accidentally pricked in the chest by his father and commanding officer while receiving his first medal, making him known as the only soldier in history to get a medal for getting a medal. <laughs> his superiors reward his action by promoting him to captain only to give Parmenter command of remote Fort Courage, a dumping ground for the Army's least useful soldiers and misfits. Now, let's see. Now, according to this, the Secretary of War, played by William Woodson in an episode, well, well, notes why the Army sent them out there hoping they'd all desert. Indeed, of the of three commanding officers at Fort Kirch before Parmenter, two did desert the army, while the third suffered a nervous breakdown. 
Now, much of the humor of the series derives from the scheming of Captain Parmenter's somewhat crooked but amiable non-commissioned officers. Those include, Sar which those were Sergeant Morgan O'Rourke, played by Forrest Tucker, and Corporal Randolph Agarn, played by Larry Storch, who happens to be the only surviving cast member of the series. Now, O'Rourke and Agarn are in league with the fictitious American Indian tribe known as the Hakawis, led by Chief Wild Eagle. And they are forever seeking to expand and conceal their shady business deals covertly and collectively referred to as O'Rourke Enterprises, where they're, where they're making money and not war. Well, initially, rations and pay were drawn for 30 men at Fort Courage, even though only 17 are actually accounted for. The other 13, according to O'Rourke, are Indian scouts who only come to the fort at night and leave before dawn. The pay of the fictitious scouts is apparently used to help finance the dealings of O'Rourke Enterprises. Although O'Rourke and Agarn try to take full advantage of Captain Parmenter's innocence and naivety, they are also very fond and fiercely protective of him, and woe be to anyone attempting to harm him. And, well, Parmenter also struggles to exert his authority outside the ranks. Being very bashful, he tried to escape the matrimonial plans from his gal pal, shopkeeper, and postmistress, Jane Angelica Thrift, better known to us as Wrangler Jane, played by Melody Patterson, who actually was 15 when she auditioned but was, and was awarded the role at the age of 16. Though he becomes a bit more affectionate toward her during the second season. So anyway, I have to say I've seen all the episodes. I've rewatched a few in the last couple of days just so I could do this. I'm just gonna say this is absolutely a comic blast. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, but it's really a funny show. F Troop is. Now, let's see now. Also in F Troop are Private Hamble Dobbs, played by James Hampton, who recently appeared, was one of the stars of the Doris Day show, if I'm not mistaken. And, well, he's also the bugler, and apparently he can only play Yankee Duel and Dixie with regularity. Well... You got got to tell you he's he's pretty funny in my view. There's also Trooper Vanderbilt, played by Joe Brooks. He's the Fort's lookout who seems all but blind even with glasses. According to Agarn, he's got twenty nine hundred. That's twenty slash nine hundred in each eye, and answers questions from the lookout tower about what he sees with. In Congress responses. And then there's Trooper Duffy, played by Bob Steele. He's an aged old time cavalryman with a limp, the result of his old Alamo injury acting up again. Excuse me. Now, now, other cast members include Frank DeCova as Chief Wild Eagle, who, I gotta tell you, he's the leader of the Hakawis, and he's absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> now, even though he was credited at the end of the show's first season, he was later at his character, well, his well, the actor's name was later added to the intro to the second season, as the character would become important enough. Anyway, and another member of the Hakawis who would later appear in the first season a few times, but became bigger in the second season, is Crazy Cat, played by Don Diamond, who is Chief Wild Eagle's goofy assistant. And air apparent. Believe me, he is crazy. And he humorously comments on the situation of what goes on. It's like, 
when Wild Eagle Away Crazy Cat play. <laughs> oh boy, this this is absolutely crazy, but I absolutely love the show. And it's got lots of recurring characters and various guest stars. Among some of them include Bernard Fox, who of course was well this was he appeared in one of the season one episodes and this was before he later joined Bewitched as Dr. Bombay. Let's see. Don Rickles, Jack Elam, Lee Merriweather, Jamie Farr, before he even played Klinger on MASH. George Goebel, Pat Harrington Jr., who of course would go on to play Schneider on One Day at a Time. Let's see, and Zsa, Zsa Gabor. Let's see, Paul Lind, another Bewitch alumni, because he played um, Uncle Arthur. Harvey Corman, Milton Burrow. Julie Newmar, who early the following year, while well, F Troop was being big, started playing Catwoman on Batman. Let's see. Sterling Hallway and Phil Harris, a couple of big voice actors for Disney, appeared on the show as well. Plus Vincent Price. And let's see. I'm seeing some others. Vic Tabak, who would play Mel on Alice, appeared. Another big voiceover, John Stevenson, who, of course, was voicing Mr. Slate on the Flintstones at the time this show came out. Of course, that show was in its final season. Let's see, and um, Henry Gibson's on here a few times. Oh, the list goes on. Anyway, the show ended after only two seasons. Now, although the show was doing well, but the show ended, unfortunately, according to Mr. Tucker, Warner Bros. New Owner Seminars discontinued the production because they thought it was wasteful for so much of the Warner Ranch to be taken up by a single half-hour TV show. And producer William Orr says the studio was also unhappy with the ad costs of producing the show in color during its second season. Thus, the show ended. However, the show did get a good life in syndication. It was a favorite in, on Nick at Night in the 90s. And then, and they also got shown TV Land, the Good Life TV Network, and recently, Me TV. Now, currently... A new Diginet called Circle has carried the show since earlier this year. And it's also being shown internationally. So, if you have the Circle Network, check your listings. Anyway, now, I also have something else. It has been released on video cassette. Well, most of the episodes came out in 1998. In 2005, the show got released on DVD for the first time on the Warner Bros. Television Favorites. I actually have this with six episodes. And it was so successful that, let me see. Oh, yes. After this, the first season would come out. Which I have. I actually have the complete series. It's the first season in black and white. I believe that came out the, the next year, I believe. And then the next year, we got the second and only other season in color. Yes. So, I'd say if you really want some hysterical Western War satire, look into F Troop. You won't be disappointed that... At least, I don't think you will. But I think you'll really like it. Actually, after the show ended, Forrest Tucker and Larry Storch went on, well, would re-team for the Ghostbusters in, on Saturday mornings in 1975. And speaking of which, Storch had recently done the voice of Phineas J. Whoopi on the Saturday morning cartoon, Tennessee Tuxedo and His Tales, which actually was also still on at the time the show actually premiered, as a matter of fact. So anyway, give F Troop a try if you've never seen it. Again, I think you'll really like it.
But anyway, what are your thoughts on AF Troop? Have you seen the show? Please, and if you have, please tell me what you thought about in the comment section below. If you like this, click the like button, subscribe to my channel as well, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Alright, and join me again next time when I bring to you another review. But I won't tell you what it is, though. Just stay tuned and find out. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, see these other TV logs. In the upper left-hand corner is my TV log of Bewitched, which look for my TV log of the other magical sitcom, I Dream a Genie, coming up real soon, coming this weekend. Or check out my TV log of Batman in the upper right-hand corner. Or to see what... Tucker and Storch and done. go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my Saturday morning TV log of the Ghostbusters from 1975. In the bottom right-hand corner of the button, you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks again for watching my TV log of F Troop. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.